Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Nazareth Studios and another Judah and Friends devlog. A lot of exciting things have happened in the last couple of weeks, and I'm excited to sit here and share them with all of you. So, without any more further introductions, let's hop straight into it. So, as most of you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was placed into contact with an amazing Christian comic book artist named Adam. Adam has been a comic book artist for over a decade now, and he's been working on an amazing webcomic called Legend of the King Kios Chronicles. If you haven't checked out the webcomic, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description of this video. So after this video, you can go check it out. When me and Adam first got together, the thing I wanted him to immediately start working on is the enemies. The enemies in my game are going to vary, but for the first one, I want to gladly introduce the Reptilians. Reptilians are instinctual beings, so they stop at nothing to get whatever they want whenever they want it, and they'll attack anyone who stands between them and the thing they desire. And I know you must be thinking, why don't these guys look ferocious? And well, the answer is pretty simple. While this game is made for everyone, I want the enemies to be lighthearted, so they're not too terrifying for kids to encounter. Similar to that of enemies in games like Mario, you can see that all they really have is sharp teeth and angry eyebrows. And who knows, maybe we'll incorporate that more into some of the future enemies in this game. But for now, I feel like this is a good starting foundation. But yeah, now that you know what the character concepts look like for the reptilians, please let me know which one is your favorite in the comment section of this video. I would love to hear your opinion on this. Now, with the reptilians out of the way, me and Adam decide to move on to the main character, the main protagonist, Judah. And while most of you know that I have a Judah model already, I just feel personally like this model in particular doesn't fit the bill of the game. So what we decided to do is completely change him. If you all remember at the beginning of this adventure, I showed you a concept of Judah. And you'll also remember I was completely unable to achieve this style, and that's primarily due to the fact that I'm not a 2D artist, and I don't know how to make a 360 of a character. So with that in mind, I gave the concept to Adam, he gave it back to me, I started dancing because I was looking at this fabulous piece of concept art. And because of Adam, I was able to create this Judah that I'm absolutely in love with. Other than that, I have been able to create some animations for both Judah and the Slithian. Here's a little showcase of those, but because they're not completely in the game yet, I'm gonna leave them out of this devlog. Also, if you like the way Judah and the Slithian turned out, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Character concepts and 3D models aside, in the last couple of weeks, one of the things that I was able to get in was some simple VFX for the dust that comes from Judah when he runs. The first step I took in doing this was trying out a method in Houdini where I created a simulation to get this dust-like effect. But after exporting it and importing it into Unreal, creating this whole material and a VFX with it, I just realized this was not the route that I wanted to go. So I opened up Photoshop, created a little cloud, and then imported that into Unreal where I immediately saw some great results. The next step was getting this into the game. In hindsight, this is actually quite simple. All you have to do is get the animation that you want the VFX to play on and create notifications for when the foot hits the ground. In the animation BP of the character, you now have access to events created by those notifications you've just made. Now that we have an event that fires every time the foot hits the ground, we can use that event to essentially spawn a Niagara system at the location where the foot meets the ground. If you're interested to see, all you do is get the bone location every time the event fires, you use that location to cast a line, you get the impact point at which the line meets the ground, and then you feed that into a spawn system at location node. After that, you can use that system to essentially set all the parameters within the VFX. I also use the same system on the wall slide in my game, but as you can obviously see, now Judah runs around with little clouds spawning from his feet. Yeah. 
Now, if you've been a part of the live streams at all throughout the last couple of weeks, you'll know that I've been spending a lot of time on the wall clean. The wall clean is still yet to be finished, so I'm not going to include the gritty, in-depth look at the development aspect of it. However, since I do have some of it finished, I'll show you a little bit of what I have. As of now, the player can enter into a wall cling, they can jump from a wall cling, they can exit the wall cling by either jumping, letting go of their input, or moving away when they're sliding down the wall. And as you can see, the animation plays well with each one of these entrances and exits. There's still a lot to add to the mechanic, for instance, directional jumping. There's also some other checks and balances that I have to do within this, but as of the moment, this is what I have, and I hope it's enough to suffice for this devlog for the week. Other than that, everyone, I appreciate you all stopping by. If you like the video, please make sure to like the video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We live stream as much as we possibly can throughout the week. I've been a little bit busy recently, but I would love to see you stop by. Other than that, guys, God bless. I'll catch you around. And until next time, Jesus loves you.